the preference card. This is what we're going to be talking about today. Picking a case card and talking about preference cards. Let's do this. Welcome back to another Surgical Tech Tips. Today, we are going to be picking a case cart in the sterile supply room. Uh, I want to go do a little brief overview again of the preference cart itself. We'll do a little walkthrough uh, through the sterile supply room, and we're gonna be picking a case cart as well. A couple things to note that is, you know, your hospital, there might be people there that uh, actually pick the case cards for you. If you do have that, awesome. That helps a lot and saves a lot of time. But if you don't, uh, usually either you have to go in in the morning and print out your preference cards for your cases for the day and pick your own case cards, in which case this video is for you, or two, uh, all those preference cards are printed out the night before and you'll just come into the sterile supply room, find out, find your preference cards, get your case cards ready, and uh, get through your day. So let's get through this. Let's pick a cart. All right, so first thing I want to go over, just a brief little overview over the preference card itself. Up top on the preference card, you're going to have patient name, the surgeon doing the surgery, and the surgery itself. Moving down, you have gloves. These are all open supplies in this section, and these are all hold supplies in this section. Uh, obviously, open supplies, you're opening everything in this section. Hold supplies, you're usually waiting until the surgeon comes into the room to ask him if he needs any of these, and you know it just depends on whether or not they may need them. Uh, irrigations or solutions they might like to use. Second page, we've got the instrument set that we're going to be using for the case, the suture that we're going to be using for the case, and the dressings that we're going to be using for the case. Uh, all of these separate little boxes here are kind of places where you can put notes on the preference card, um, positioning notes for the nurse, uh, what type of medication they may like to use for like a local anesthetic, uh, how they may like to prep the patient, and any equipment that they might need in the OR and, and settings for that equipment as well in, in any of these boxes. And then just general comments as well. Uh, a lot of surgical techs will put extra comments in the comment section as well as to maybe how they like to drape, and uh, stuff like that. All right, we are ready. We have our preference card, we have our case cart, and we're ready to pick this case. I did choose a very simple case to make this uh, a little quicker and a little easier. So this is just an excision of a lipoma. So it's really not too in depth as far as uh, sterile supplies go, but you'll get the basic idea. So to start picking this case, we are basically just going to go right down this list and pick everything in order. Uh, the first thing that we have to pick, if you remember from looking at the preference card before, is gloves. So there's two uh, seven, uh, seven biogels for this, uh, for this surgeon that I'm just going to place right there in those hold bins. And I'm going to get gloves for, my, for myself too. I like to wear the seven and a half biogels during the case, but I'll also set up with the seven and a half non-latex always set up with a non-latex glove. Let's move on. Next on down the list we have two items that are the nurse is going to use during this case and that is the chloroprep which is the prep solution uh, for the patient and the bovi pad that they will be putting on on that thigh. So let's grab a chloroprep and our bovi pad and I'll just place that right on top of my cart because it's a little easier to get to. Now it looks like the last open uh, general supply that needs to be opened before we move on into drapes is just going to be this 10cc syringe. Pretty much used across the board for injecting local. Okay, now we've got a couple drapes to pick. We've got some three-quarter sheets, a couple packs of towels, and it looks like a basin and a pediatric minor drape. So, I know the three-quarter sheets are right here. I'll just put those right underneath couple packs of towels. I'll just place them on the top there. And your pediatric minor drape. That is going to be in the next aisle over. Let's go over there. There it is. Nailed it. 
Now you're probably wondering right now, why isn't there any gowns? Why isn't there a bobe on there? There's no suction tubing, there's no suction tip. Where is all that stuff coming from? And it's actually coming from this double basin on the preference card. This double basin on the preference card is this is uh, this is like a giant custom pack. Well, not a giant custom pack. This is our like general minor custom pack. It comes with plastic basins in it. Comes with its own bobby and tip. Comes with suction tubing, suction tip. It's got blades already in it. Two ten blades and a fifteen blade. Uh, it's got towels. It's got gowns. It's got all that stuff all packed in to this little package here with the table drape all included. Makes it much, much easier. There's one last supply for open. I forgot about it. And it's your hypo. You need that to go with your control syringe. Let me go grab that. It was right here the whole time. <laughs> now I want to take a second to talk about that because I went over to where the, the needles actually used to be. Our hypos used to be down there, but they did change this a few weeks ago or a, like a couple months ago and I'm still not used to it obviously because I went back to the same place it was. If you're ever in doubt, and I hope that your hospital is this organized, but if you see that if you see this column over here to the left of our items, that column, it, it looks like a bunch of random letters and numbers, but actually when you do a close up to all of these different sections, all of these different sections in our sterile supply room have those numbers. So if you're ever wondering where a certain item is, you just look at that item location and then look at all the labels on the walls and on the carts themselves and you'll be able to easily find them. Now instead of picking the rest of these hold supplies and moving this cart around the whole sterile supply room, as you can see some of these little halls are pretty narrow, like narrow enough to only fit one cart at a time. So I'm just going to run through here really quick and pick the rest of these hold supplies and toss them in the cart. I'll be right back. That's it for hold items. All right, so that's it for picking sterile supplies in the supply room. All of my open items I put in my open box, as well as I have a couple of the bigger items on top of the cart right here. Uh, if you have more open items, you can use you know, a second drawer. All the hold items are down here in the hold box, and I've got some drapes over here uh, underneath underneath these open boxes. Let's go grab that instrument tray. All right, We're at the instrument room. All right, so you guys have been in this instrument room before. Uh, for this case, on the preference card, we have a minor tray. This is just a general minor tray, very small case, so it's just going to use a, a minor tray. So let's grab it. All right, 
Let's move on to the suture room. And we're back in the suture room. You guys have been in here a couple of times. And for this case, it's very simple. All it is, is we are picking a zero Vicryl tie, 18 inch. We're picking a 3O Vicryl SH for subcutaneous, and that is your deep layer closure, and a 4O Monocryl PS2, and that's going to be your subcuticular or your skin stitch for closure as well. That's pretty much it for picking this card. But while we're in here, let's talk about a couple other tips that I want to share with you guys that, that could help you with, uh, with picking cards and picking multiple cards uh, throughout the day. Now, if you have, say, like four or five case cards that you have to pull for your day, you have a big lineup, um, you can pick them all kind of at the same time if you know what you're going to need, and you can kind of pick them all at the same time. Uh, you could do that. You don't necessarily have to go specifically down the list for each single individual card. When you're first starting out, you might have to do that, but after you gain a little experience and you kind of know what the surgery and what the surgeon is going to need, it's much easier to just kind of pull everything in groups when you know you're going to need it for multiple cases. Uh, on, on a side note for that, uh, picking extra stuff for certain cases is is always something that I do. Uh, inevitably, you're always going to end up needing more gowns, sometimes even more gloves. So if I have a lineup with a surgeon for the whole day, I'll pick a few extra gowns, I'll pick a few extra gloves for both of us, and I'll just keep them in the room just on the side, and I won't open them up, and those will just be for hold items so the nurse doesn't have to jump out of the room and go grab things. And also on a case-by-case -case basis, you may end up grabbing extra things, maybe laps, stuff, different types of sutures. That's definitely a biggie. You'll always end up picking up more suture than what's on the preference card, your just-in-case suture. You know they've used it before in certain circumstances, so you'll pick it just in case and just have it on hold so the nurse doesn't have to jump out of the room. That's that's, that's an important skill to have as you gain experience, is to make sure that you try and keep that OR nurse in the OR as much as possible. Alright guys, I think that's it for this uh, case cart pick video extravaganza. Tell me what you think about it, I hope you liked the video. If you did, let me know in the comments. And as always, thank you so much for the subscribers, new and old, coming into the channel. Always love having more people in here. and and you know growing this channel and helping it grow so thank you so much guys i'll see you again